everyone it's Ani with Chica's Kitchen and today I'm going to it's about almost 5 30 in the morning I'm going to marinate these chicken wings uh, because I'm going to make uh, black strap molasses honey barbecue wings and I want to show you how I make mine they will be breaded, and I'm tell you what you need. You're gonna need your chicken wings. These are already washed. You can clip these little ends of the wings if you want to. I leave them on because after they bake, I usually cut them off and we give them to Boots as a treat. But anyway, you're going to need your wings well washed. Let me go get a glove. Okay. Gloves on. Okay, so we got our chicken wings. Now, I'm not making all these tonight, but I am going to season them all and freeze the other one half of it for a later date. Okay, so the first thing that we do after we wash the wings in cold water and some amount and some lemon juice is good and or salt, brine it is we're going to sprinkle some adobo. Okay, so you sprinkle adobo to taste. Just mix that up real well. The next ingredient is going to be your sofrito. Now I have a video on how to make this. I gotta make another one. I have a little problem with that one. But it's up there. <laughs> Sorry, I had to walk away. I had to sneeze. These allergies, boy, I'll tell you what. Southern states. Okay, so you get just a frito on there, about a cooking spoon size, just enough to coat the chicken. Remember, all it is is peppers, onions, and garlic. Blend it up with some cilantro and culantro. See? That along with the adobo will give a good taste. Now, you can put in a packet of sazon, but... That would be a little bit overwhelming for my taste because I do want them sweet. But I do want some, a kick of good flavor in there too. That's why I add the sofrito and the adobo. Puerto Ricanize it. <laughs> ah, it's good seasoning though. It really is. You ought to try it on your meats. That's a marinade. Alright, so there's these gloves. Them. We to the side. Already used that. Next thing we want is the black strap molasses. I got Golden Barrel, and this is unsulfured. And just pour to taste, usually generously, because this does yield a lot. And it thickens and yields. It thins out some, but then it'll thicken. And then just massage that on around the chicken wings. You see how that yields? Kind of spreads out. Mm -hmm. And then there's liquid on the bottom. So it does thin out and liquefies. And that's what I mean by it's thick but thins out. <laughs> it's thick enough to coat every little bit, inch of your meat. So 
to marinate it well, but it also kind of thins out to make a nice marinade or liquid on the bottom. I don't know if you all can see that, but see, yep, yeah, love it. All right, so let me rinse my hands. I just love rather. Okay, next is going to be the brown sugar. And this is going to accelerate that good molasses because this also has molasses. So it's going to complement. They complement one another. And the adobo has salt. So the salt will also help enhance the flavors of the molasses and sugar. And then we want to toss that around and mix that sugar in there real good with the liquid of the blackstrap molasses, unsulfured that is. Oh yeah. Now, you could put some honey barbecue sauce in this also, if you want to. Look at that, look at that. Oh, this is going to be so good. Mm -mm -mm. ready to go into the refrigerator to marinate until we're ready for it. And put this in the fridge. And let that sit in there and marinate real well before I divide it up and freeze half. Now, here's one thing. The reason why I have this out is because this is what, how I bread mine. I use about um, a half a cup of Italian style, because remember, I'm not cooking that whole pack of chicken wings, only half. So about half a cup of Italian style breadcrumbs and about two thirds cups of flour. Or you can do half a cup too, it doesn't, you know, if you need more, you can always mix more. So that's what I use to bread it with. I don't do, it doesn't need any type of egg wash or anything like that. Believe me, that molasses and that honey or oh, that uh, dark uh, brown sugar and all that, it's going to be very sticky. And this will adhere to it very easily. Shake it off, then we'll put it on a rack and we'll bake these wings. We're not frying them, we're baking them. And they come out so crispy and so delicious. You'll see. Anyway, I'll bring you back this afternoon 
with the video on the uh, steakhouse potato gratin and the wings. Okay, so that would be dinner for tonight. I'll see you then. Hey, y'all. Um, okay, so I'm back with the wings. Look at this. Oh, they are so soaked in black strap molasses and brown sugar. Oh, it's going to be so good. I've already put the other half away in the freezer with uh, some of the liquid. Oh, yeah. Those are going to be even better than these, I have a feeling. Okay. Oh, look at that right there. Anyway, mm, delicious. I went ahead and mixed up my flour, a cup of flour with half a cup of Italian-style breadcrumb. I, mine is uh, Progresso, I think. But any one will do. Or you can even use cornmeal. And I've got my rack over here to lay the chicken wings down. And I'm going to go ahead and start mixing this. Okay, let me get you set up. And start putting this on the platter. Never have enough counter space. Never. It's like the more you get, the more you need. <laughs> That's terrible. But thank you, Jesus, for what you provided. All right, so here we go. Because I've already washed my hands. So just sanitize it. to the gas grill. I guess he's patching it up. It gets weather worn. Alright, so, and those things are pretty expensive. Jeez. Alright, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. This is to brush off any extra flour, and I'm going to do that with some barbecue sauce. Mm-hmm. Alright. Uh, let's see how I'm going to do this. So I got seven, I believe. I counted seven. You never know. <laughs> I wear glasses. Um, I've got seven wings here. I know I put seven away, that's for sure. I think I counted 14 altogether in that family pack. Okay. And we're going to dump that in there. Look how that molasses sticks with the brown sugar, sticks to the chicken wing. See that? That is beautiful. So you just want to pretty much lightly coat it. I'm just going to use my fingers and grab the little end that we're not going to eat, that we're going to give to Bootsy Girl as a treat. She's already five pounds overweight. <laughs> It's because, I'm going to tell you why, she only eats one meal a day, and we'll give her bones and stuff, you know, we'll put that in her bowl, like if we have extra bones and stuff, if she's been good, or as a treat, it's good to clean her teeth with. It's the fact that she's so on me, we can't take her out, we can't, she'll try to eat everybody up. <laughs> I mean, she has a thing against her own kind that she wants to fight every single thing that moves. Now, we've had her since she was three months. So, I don't know what happened that traumatized her, but she suffers from high anxiety, we come to find out. 
I mean, we took her to training school and everything for service dog, because that's how I got her. She was prescribed to me uh, by the VA and by one of my therapists at the VA, or my therapist, not one of. It's not like I have a whole team <laughs> of doctors for my craziness. But um, she was prescribed, and so I got her as a gift. Uh, my, my oldest son surprised me with her. She's the cutest thing. Big blue innocent eyes, and just a chubby little doggy. And you know how they're little and you just fall so in love with them? Any dog will do. <laughs> so we put her through training and it just, um, as we went along, the trainer noticed her anxiety every time we would have uh, a test. And, you know, she'd have to perform various exercises and, and, and things like that and uh, how she could could behave in a very busy uh, environment. She did well, but one of the things she also did is every time uh, the trainer's daughter, who she used, like maybe she's about nine or 10, she would use her daughter as a distraction, you know, to help her with the exercise in the class and, you know, walk around with bells and making noise and just running and this, just to make sure the dogs stay focused on their handler and not you know just keeping an eye on everything but not react so anyway she noticed the handler noticed that <laughs> i mean the trainer noticed that every time her daughter would pass by boots boots would do a very low growl like, and it was only when her daughter did so I was like well maybe there's a certain scent maybe she scents you know has a scent of other dogs or something but no I come to find out there were other kids there and we tested her with that every single little kid yeah she growled at so then we took her to the caged in dog park it's pretty big over on base and they have two sides they have for large dog and they have for small dogs and it's pretty long and um, it's a big area, it's fenced off, and they have little water fountains and stuff for the dogs. They have, you know, all kinds of stuff for pooping and picking up the poop and stuff. You know, very nice, well kept. Well, anyway, we couldn't take her in there. She wanted to kill every single dog. I mean, we, uh, we got a dog named Storm, another, uh, Pit Bull, he was a rescue, the cutest little gray, he was a blue pit. And he was so smart and I would have loved to have kept him because I figured I could use him and send him to school for service dog and just keep her as a pet because I couldn't give her up. I'm gonna tell you why I didn't give her up. First of all, if I was to give her up to anybody because she has such beautiful clear blue eyes, they would wanna show her off and that would put the public in danger, kids in danger, and that's all I needed on my conscience. So I said, no, I'm a keeper because I already know her. I know what's wrong with her, and she'll be safe here, you know? So anyway, so there goes the exercise. So we got a treadmill, and I tried to put her on it, but she slid all the way back to the wall. <laughs> she kept barking at it, and then she wouldn't go near it anymore. Shush, you know I'm talking about you. So anyway, she's just funny. I love her dearly. But anyway, we got that other dog thinking, you know, we can use it for training and just change the name on the prescription. Got all that taken care of. Spent about almost $600 getting that dog up to date on shots and nutrition and, you know, just all the stuff that it needed. And, and Boots about killed that dog. She sure did. While she was on the leash, she, because he didn't know any better. He was trying to be friendly with us, so he just, you know, just trots right on over to her. And she got him. She bit his leg, there was blood everywhere. She was going for his neck, and I had to pull her just in time. She would kill him. She bit his, she grabbed his leg and flipped him on his back and was going right towards his neck. And I had, and I caught her just in time, boy. It was, 
blood squirt all over my glass windows. <laughs> it was a mess. I had to, you know, we had to take him to the doctor, uh, get him doctored up and got him some pain pills and stuff. But he didn't cry, not once. He was a rescue because they used to use him as a bait dog. So imagine, I felt terrible. So uh, we called the person we got him from and, you know, she was kind enough. They were kind enough to travel all the way back to Louisville uh, to pick him up. I just, I just didn't know what to do. And I couldn't give her up because, like I said, you know, whoever she, I was afraid whoever she, uh, she uh, end up with would want to show her off because she is beautiful. Her eyes alone. I couldn't, I just couldn't in all good conscience do that to the public. You know, if she was to maul a little kid or something like that. Mm -hmm. When my grandkids come over, she gets, she gets, she has her own bedroom. She has her own big bed. She is very spoiled. But, when my grandkids come over, we put her in that room. Or we have a part of the hallway that's fenced up with a big old wooden door because she broke the other one. <laughs> a gate, not door. And um, she's very powerful. She's 75 pounds. Pit, pit uh, bull. Uh, I think it's, uh, she's mixed with a bull massive. Anyway, she's bull. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so she has her own room, and whenever I got company, even adults, then she doesn't get along with all, all grown-ups. Yeah, I had company where she'll go up to them wagging her butt, wagging her tail, and go right up to them and start growling, you know, or she'll lunge at them. So, I, yeah, I can't trust her. She suffers from high anxiety. I was telling everybody, yeah, I got a service dog. My son, I got to get a service dog for my service dog. My service dog needs a service dog. <laughs> oh, Lord. But she is a sweetheart for us, to us. She loves my hubster. Oh, she's crazy. That's her play buddy because he wrestles with her on the floor. and You know, he plays. Well, I can't do all that. I can't do all that. I'll tell you what pit bulls are, are uh, known for. They will run like they're running for a touchdown, and they will knock everything down in their path because they have laser vision, and they are laser focused, and whatever they focus on, lock in on, that's the ultimate goal. Believe me, they, that's all they see. And she would do that and kind of almost try to tackle me, like run into and knock me down. I had to turn around one time, and I saw her coming, and I knew she wasn't going to slow down. I had to stop it to her, running a job. And then she just said, like, she just, like, blinked and was like, what? <laughs> and then she continued to play, but she didn't do that running and uh, dodging and, and ramming. Uh-uh, she stopped that real quick. All it took was one right hook. Yep. You have to be strong because pit bulls are very strong. They are the most loving animal, but they do. They do have a stu stu stubborn streak. Very much so. Reminds me of a cat, kind of. They got like a little bit of a, a meow personality characteristic, you know? Well, they're going to do what they want to do every once in a while. You know, but but she's a, she's I love her. She's my girl, and she's happy here. But anyway, because she I can't get her to exercise, and it doesn't look like the treadmill's gonna work. She's gonna gain five pounds. <laughs> oh Lord! Yeah, she did. Okay, this is six. Oh, Lord, I had. I'm just going to do two more. And then I, I had eight, I had ten in here. Oh, it didn't look like ten. All right, so you guys are watching all this while I'm yapping away. Yeah. 
Anyway. I think she's the only one out of her litter, too, that came out with those bright blue eyes. Her daddy has blue eyes like her. Beautiful. He's a beauty. And her mama's... She's got her mama's coloring, but her daddy's eyes. She's black and white. She's got four white boots, I call them. That's why her name... It's, well, that's not the only reason why her name is Boots, but it matches because I call her Boots on the ground, but uh, she looks like she got white boots on, so I call her Boots, Boots on the ground. Believe me, she's one that you want with her. I'll tell you what she does like. She loves to go play with the fish at the lake. Oh, yeah, shoot. She won't hurt them. She will not bite them or nothing. She just plays with them. Yep. She loves it. But she will. Anything on land, running, rabbit, anything, cat. Yeah. She'll go after that. She's a great hunter. She sure will. We had to leave one time because we saw um, Cottonmouth at the lake. And it was coming right towards us because Hopsa tried to throw a rock at it and it must have had some babies or a nest somewhere where Hopsa was fishing because boy, it locked eyes on Hopster and it was coming right at him. Perched up. Uh-huh. I said, that's it. It's time to go. <laughs> time to go. We skedaddle. Now this you want to throw out because it's had been in chicken, so you don't keep any of that. the other wing. Okay, there's just one more in there. Look at that. The last is gold. Alright. So now, we're going to use I hope I can close this back up. Yep. Go back in the freezer. I'm going to take this little container and I'm going to Honey uh, barbecue sauce. Great value. And we're just gonna dab. Kind of dab and brush real gently. I get the excess flour off of there is basically what you want to do. It'll all fall to the bottom. Alright, so I've got the oven set at 375. And these will cook for about... Mm, 50 minutes to an hour, just depends on how big your wings are, you'll be able to tell. Just cook them to the desired consistency you like them. I like mine a little bit crispy. Hey. 
and just enough. Alrighty then. Now we're going to put these babies in the oven. Hold on, I need to move it over some so the drippings won't fall outside of the pan. Okay, snap on in there. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to put these in the oven. It is set for 375. Be right back. Hold on. Can't get this to snap. Oh, there it is. Okay. timer for 45 minutes at 375 and I'll be back to check on it see 45 minutes at 375 I'll be back to check on it and we'll see if it needs more time or we'll leave it for another 10 or 15 I'll be back okay everything's off Timer went off. Let's check on these puppies. On the wings, the last dish. Oops. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm going to sit you guys up so I can grab this tray. Not on drop it. <laughs> I'm still going to be mad. <laughs> Look at those wings, y'all. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and brush this. What's left? My barbecue sauce. Oh my god, these look so delicious. Okay. Let's brush them in there. This looks so good. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna have to take a bite <laughs> out of one for sure.
Okay, there you have it, folks. There are my black strap molasses. Mm -hmm. Chicken wings. That's it. So, let's see. Officer's taking a nap. So, uh, this is going to be it. I'm not going to be able to plate it because he's not up for me to serve him. So, that's what I have. I have black strap molasses baked chicken wing. Okay, breaded. Then I have the cheesy, let's see if you can see it this way, the cheesy potatoes au gratin, well not au gratin, but helps to take a piece. <laughs> Steakhouse potato gratin. Or cheesy potato, gratin potatoes is what I like to call them. I don't know of any steakhouse that makes these. Not like that, anyway. And then, of course, we have the vegetables some corn and carrots and broccoli. All right, steam. And then on the table, over there, I'm doing laundry. All the way over there on the table, if you can see it, right there is the bread, the artisan bread. Well, that's what we have for dinner, and um, I hope you all make you some of these, especially these wings. These are the bomb, I'm telling you. There's nothing like black strap molasses. Let me show you the jar again. Oh, excuse me. Okay, Golden Barrel Unsulfured Blackstrap Molasses. Mm-hmm, delicious stuff. Well, get you some, make you some, and until the next video, I've got another nice one for you all. Uh, I've got all the ingredients. I'll probably make it tomorrow, maybe. We'll see. Depends on how much of all this food that I have in the refrigerator, um... Oh, you know what? I still have a tray of stuffed shells. I may take that out tomorrow. It's in the freezer. And uh, make that other dish I was thinking about to go with it. It would go perfect with it, I think. But anyway, I've got another recipe coming up for you all. Stay tuned to my channel. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Try some of these recipes and take a pic and post it. Let me know what you think, you know. Or if you have a request, you know, if there's anything that you would like a, a recipe on or, you know, like to see me make and demonstrate, uh, let me know. I'm open for, to requests. In the meantime, you all take care of yourselves. God bless you.